This is a TEF flour milling operation, and it has one major problem. But first I have to show you how it works. The bags of grain are dumped into this hopper. Then they are lifted by small buckets on this grain elevator and dumped into the vibratory sifter. The sifter has some fine mesh that separates anything that is larger than the small TEF grains. The clean TEF grains exit the bottom of the vibratory sifter and are lifted by a second grain elevator from where they descend into two stone grinding mills. These stone mills were imported from Denmark and they have enormous electric motors with multi-belt drives to turn the large stones and grind the flour. A large blower pulls the TEF flour out of the stone grinding mills and pushes it up into a cyclone. The flour-laden air enters at the top side of the cyclone and spins around fast. The flour is heavier than the air and gets pushed to the wall of the cyclone cone. Gravity pulls the flour down to the bottom of the cyclone. A paddle wheel valve seals the bottom of the cyclone, but also allows grain to pass through when it turns. The flour falls into the hopper for the bagging machine. An auger feeds the flour into the bags, precisely filling them by weight. Then the top of the bags gets sewn shut. Okay, so this is the cyclone here. At the bottom, there's the paddle wheel gearbox to block off air at the bottom of the cyclone, but the paddle wheels allow the flour to pass through. The top of the cyclone, which is currently disconnected, just has this big 12 inch opening that passes straight up into this box up here. And the problem with this box is it has a lot of flat surface area and it accumulates uh, flour in the surface area and it piles up really high. It was shocking how high it piled up in here. It goes all the way up to here. And so this flour just stays in there and can go bad inside there and get bugs and whatever else and mold and stuff. So it's better to not have any place where flour can accumulate. The dust from the flour all needs to pass out into these bags so then it can be emptied. There is a door on the side that can be lifted and opened and that's where we've been opening this to go in there and clean it out. Some of the ideas that we brainstormed involved having a vacuum hose inside that could be moved around from the outside or a series of compressed air jets around the perimeter that would occasionally blow off the flat surface. All of these things were over-engineered solutions to deal with a bad design. I suddenly realized that the box provided by the equipment manufacturer serves no purpose and could be replaced by some tubes just like the intake. The tubes will have fast airflow with no airs for flour to collect. Also, a smaller tube descending into the cyclone would improve the cyclone efficiency and less fine flour would go to waste. This teff flour is used to make injera bread for Ethiopian food. The fine flour improves the texture and fluffiness of the injera. So it's desirable that this is not lost due to the cyclone inefficiency. The stone grinding equipment and this part of the system was sold by a Danish company. So I expected the design and the quality to be excellent. Therefore, I don't know why they included this cyclone and exhaust box combo that's about as useful as a screen door in a submarine. I believe that Sobi may have designed this cyclone to have a blower attached directly to the top and that the rotation of the blower would increase the centrifugal forces. I had to plasma cut an adapter plate to fit the flange that attaches to the cyclone exhaust port and reduce the diameter to 5 inch duct. This white duct is going inside the cyclone to increase the exit airflow velocity. 5-inch duct and AY splitter is used to replace the box that accumulated flour dust. Large flanges were cut from HDPE plastic for the filter bags to attach to. In addition to prevent dust from accumulating, the changes to the cyclone exhaust greatly improved its performance, significantly reducing the amount of flour dust that escapes into the bags.